welcome to the Alive Lauren podcast and the place of celebrating juicy, soulful, whole, living, loving, adventuring being with full presence to the 360, 360 degrees of life. All of it, like an all-inclusive package. You know, people go on those holidays and they're all-inclusive. It's like you sign up for an all-inclusive lifetime package with the ups and the downs and the turmoils and the ecstasies and the agonies and, uh, yeah, the whole shebang. Kind of want the whole package, all-inclusive. Um, so I have four shares. So one of them piggybacks on yesterday. So yesterday was the whole theme around, like, birthing. Oh, my God, there's a very noisy car engine here. Okay, so we passed. It's actually shut itself off but it was very noisy um so yesterday chatting around birthing and the whole kind of analogy of us ourselves being birthed throughout a lifetime and about not getting away from intensity of life contractions of intensity of the emotional experiences and things that come up but it's, it's not about trying to not have them it's actually getting better at breathing and relaxing through them and i really love the whole theme with mickey singer around not being the emotion. We're the experiencer of. It's like if I now am using my cell phone, I'm not the cell phone. I'm the user of the cell phone. Like any of the things, if I have a cup of coffee, I'm not the coffee or the mug. I'm using, I'm experiencing the taste and flavor of the coffee and I'm holding the mug. I'm not them. So equally, I'm not any of the emotion like hectic intense emotions and all like levels of the spectrum um but there's something i get to experience so on this theme i was thinking also you know they have those um like those bulls those mechanical bulls which mimic when they have those rides where the cowboys like get on a bull and the whole thing is like to stay on as long as possible before the thing throws you off and then when they have those mechanical ones and just something about it just also seems to me like the people that get good at holding, like staying on that bull for a long time, it's because there's this mix of kind of relaxing in to the kind of chaos of it. It's more like the more resistant and tense somebody is to <laughs> that mechanical bull trying to throw you off, it's almost like probably the people who get thrown off first and fastest. So, yeah, finding a way to be with, that actually being with something is actually like almost like a key and a, an aid to working through it. Um, or, yeah, just making it through until, like any storm, you know, the eye of the storm, the storm, and then the storm passes. Like it, it always is an intensity, and intensity breaks. So that was the one. I also just thought with this, mechanical bull and it's also interesting because it made me think also with like life because people do it because it's fun (laughs) the people who do there are people who find it fun just like you know the whole idea ultimately a life is is for it to be fun because of the the whole experience it's not fun doesn't only mean the joyous it's it's like it's fun to be able to experience the full package (laughs) not just like half the package so, yeah, more like embracing and being with all the seasons and all the emotions and all the experiences. So that bull has lulls in between, and then it gets, like, more intense, um, yeah, in terms of trying to get somebody off. Then my other shares. So when I said to be as happy as the horse poop kid, I know I have so many, like, certain parables that I love so much and I do repeat but this one, there's no but. It's just yes, and I do repeat them. Um, with a kid who's the two rooms and the one full of the latest, newest, most amazing gadgets, toys, trinkets, everything. And the other room just full of horse manure. And like after a couple of hours, the kid in the room with the latest of everything is complaining about everything. This isn't the latest model. This broke. This is the wrong color. How can you? Oh, my God. You just can't wait to get out of that room. And the other kid in the horse manure, he's like prancing around, throwing this horse manure up, like singing, dancing. 
And when they have to actually like call him to come out and he's so distraught and so disappointed at having to come out because he's like, with all this horse poop in here, there has to be a horse in here somewhere. I just love it. I just love it so much. And it's like, the thing that I love most about it is like in a situation that's smelly, that's really not pleasant because he chose to believe, he chose something to believe that brought him joy in a really smelly, unpleasant situation. And this is where the thing, when I think playing the benefit of the doubt game, that even if in worst case scenario, somebody does something that was with malevolent intention and was deliberately done to make someone upset, the thing is like in the space of believing, because 99.9% it's not worst case scenario. It's literally someone forgot it was an unintentional mistake wasn't like deliberately planned for the bad so i love that because here just believing in the good every it just benefits everybody it benefits the person feeling it it benefits the people around them and in the end it doesn't matter even if it's not like here the kid believing there was a horse in there with the horse poop had the ball of his life in a stinky smelly room Oh my God, I just found that like so profound. And on that note, so in improv tonight, one of the exercises was like these four squares where each square as you stood in it was a different emotional state. So there was like despair and then there was curiosity and there was delight or joy and there was rage. And it was just so interesting because there would be people in a situation, two people at a time, in a situation, in a dialogue, a spontaneous improvisational dialogue. And as they moved, it was just amazing to witness this possibility of creating, cultivating this emotional state (laughs) so quickly from one to the other to move, even though it was just an improvisational scene, to such the extent that like... I could feel there was like one of the guys, every time he went into despair, I actually felt so sorry for him. I was like, oh, it was like amazing, amazing, amazing. So I definitely want to take that into playing with that in life of when there is emotional states to realize that it's possible. And you could also see so amazingly the difference in body posture from the despair to the delight and to play with that as well, which I know, but it's just great to see it and physically experience it and make the commitment to take it into me world and my last year i know i've often chatted around salsa and dance and how i think it's like the most phenomenal also experiential especially partner dance um experiential place and i think also like as a because i'm dancing as a follower which means then it's not about me trying to preempt but it's about me being deeply present the person I'm dancing with with the limited contact points that we have to see where it's going without knowing where it's going to go and it just oh reminds me so much of like then dancing with life with God with whatever you want to call it like this engagement of needing to just be in the present being fully in the present and and there's opportunities to still like show style and show your own uniqueness um but to be led without trying to force other situations and other maneuvers but equally also from the leader's side it's all about gentle and softness constantly there are these reprimands to the leaders about you don't ever you're not like gripping a hand and you're not like forcing a move it's very gentle and it's very light and it's just about a contrast between the two like in the male and female hand if the one's on top of the other so it's not about anybody like forcefully holding and moving so actually that subtlety and that softness is on both sides but it only works when both sides are gentle and soft and tuning into the moment oh yeah so that is beautiful beautiful because the reason i'm sharing that is i find that the most challenging part of salsa because you see during the lesson it's very easy because i know what's coming and i'm taught in step by step and afterwards when i dance with other people that i have no idea what's going to happen or what's going to come next it really is like this massive lesson in surrendering 
And today I was just yeah, really like a lot more conscious and forgiving of myself when I totally lose the plot and I'm trying to make something happen or yeah, I just don't know where it's going and it's all okay. It's all okay. So on that glorious note, oh my goodness, here is, here is too, realizing our power, playing with our power to shift emotional states if we want to, but we can, we can, we can, we can play with it, play with it in terms of posture, situations, shifting. Here it is to being like the horse poop kid and finding stuff that we can believe in that makes smelly situations not only bearable, but like joyful. Wow, wow, wow. And here it is to dancing with life in gentleness and softness and deep presence. And even if we play the game of those mechanical balls to enjoy the subtle periods in between and to kind of really find a way of relaxing into the tense periods instead of like having a rigidity and resistance when it gets intense. So happy adventuring, precious heart. Until we meet again.